In 2063, only two continents with civilizations existed after the seas rose, engulfing all coastlines and Earth's axis shifted its tilt. Nuclear wars and global warming did this. Both distant landmasses are constantly at war with each other, as billions have died, staking claim to what resources are left. Cassidy, Sullivan, Sarge Hendricks, and Baines are guardians of one sentinel. The skeleton crew on this last outpost and remains in defense of their continent. Relief was supposed to arrive three months ago to end their two-year post. Suddenly, a ship, the Aurora, comes into view. No one is on board. Why is it there? And what happened to it? The crew stationed together on this Sentinel for two years are not really who they appear to be. So what is going on here? Let's find out. Just 40 years in the future, climate change has eliminated all but two continents, and the sea has taken over. These remaining land masses are at war with each other over the limited resources. A skeleton crew on an outpost, the Sentinel, prepares for another storm. Being out of supplies, they are fishing and catching a good haul which will sustain them since their resources have dwindled. But the Category 9 storm is approaching. Cassidy tells Sully to hook the net, but the waves are rough and he can't get a hold of it. The outpost springs a leak and things are tumbling about. Cassidy tells Sully to leave the net and come inside to batten down the hatches. Baines is trying to stop the water from pouring in and barely makes it to safety as the waves crash. The impact tears away the net and now they have no food. They have been stationed there for two years and are three months overdue for their relief. Things are dire after the storm. The sink is broken and now with high radiation they need weekly iodine baths and the supply will only last a month. They have to cut down on the power because the generator is low on diesel fuel as well. A carnival cruise, this is not. The crew assesses the damage, argues, and complains. They agree they need to get off the rig as soon as they can. Sarge Hendrich and Sully see a ship in the distance. Cassidy picks it up on the radar. Sarge orders them to man the gun and sounds the alarm. They try to communicate with the vessel, but no response. Sarge tells Sully to take the dinghy and investigate on his own. They protect the swallows together. The ship's name is Aurora, and it appears to be abandoned. Sully turns off his radio due to loud static and searches about. There's plenty of needed food and iodine. The crew helmets and gear are ready, but it is as though everyone disappeared. On the Sentinel, they hail Sully on the radio, but no response. So they begin to arm Martha, the nuclear bomb, as ordered if the enemy enters their territory. Whichever continent has the one remaining nuke controls the world mentality. At the last second, Sully responds and is told to tow the vessel back. Cassidy looks at a picture of her family. Then Scully comes a-calling, and it's evident they have a relationship too. They have some good old-fashioned fun together. While bathing in the iodine, the crew is discussing what to do. Sarge says they will not report the mystery ship until they have more information. Sarge accesses the Aurora's navigation log and begins to plot its course. They communicate with the mainland via Morse code when making the daily report. Sully sends a message inquiring about the Aurora against the Sarge's orders. All are at the bridge awaiting an answer when the Sarge enters and hears the return message. Baines rats out Sully, but the message is a mirror, the exact words of Scully's outgoing message. No one on land downloaded it, and it came back around. Hmm, mysterious. They assume a malfunction in the signal and expect a reply within days. Bane sneaks on board the Aurora and gets caught by Sully upon his return. So he shows he stole a whiskey bottle and the two chat. Bane states that his wife, who works for the military, suspects the inhabitants of the enemy continent no longer exist. No one has seen them 
for 40 years. But they keep the outposts because they just don't know. They're getting drunk and Bane says that he thinks he can get the Aurora running so they can make it to the mainland. Sully tells Cassidy that all they have to do is convince Sarge to sail the boat and leave before the next storm cycle. That would give them three days to begin their two-week journey home. They get the ship running, but when they inform Sarge Hendricks, he tells them to break the engine down and remove it all for parts. Sully protests and says it's their only chance to get off this stinking outpost, but Sarge has his orders and refuses. Sully says they vote, but is reminded that Sarge is in charge and the commander shows his gun to prove it. The three want to stage a mutiny, but Sarge has both keys to arm Martha, which could further destroy the Earth. Like killing all the dogs, cats, and swallows, as the drunken Sully once put it. Sully thinks Sarge is crazy enough to do it if the three take the Aurora and leave him behind. Cassidy speaks with Sarge, then the crew assembles, and Sarge informs them he is convinced they need to sail the ship back with a message stating they need supplies. His plan is to have him and Cassidy stay behind so as not to abandon their post. Baines and Sully will take the ship. Sully goes to visit Cassidy and offers to stay so she can return to her family. Cassidy tells him no, just go pack. He then offers for both of them to stay on the outpost because he loves her. She says he's only been a human necessity for her. He means nothing. Ooh, that's gonna sting. Just a boy toy? Really? That hurts. Sarge is looking at the coordinates last traveled by the Aurora, and he notices something strange. He contemplates telling Cassidy, then realizes he shouldn't. There is another ship in the distance, and Cassidy hails them to no response. Sarge tells them to shoot it, and they fire, but miss. Sully and Baines then see it is their ship, which they were to take to the mainland. It has just drifted away. Everyone except the Sarge says they shouldn't sink it. When Bane refuses, Sarge shoots him. Sully shoots and destroys the ship. Cassidy hits Sarge in the head, knocks him out, and they drag him to the hold. They now have both keys for their nuclear bomb, Martha. Baines is adamant that they do not let the Sarge out. He is traumatized over the incident and is drinking heavily. He even says he quits. Sully visits Sarge and asks why he changed his mind about leaving on the ship. Sarge replies he retraced the ship's route. It was here three months ago. As planned, the Aurora was heading straight toward their beacon to change crew and bring them home. But then it veered away. Then it stopped five miles from there. Why stop? After that, it was just drifting aimlessly. So the question is, who of the three crew went out there with the beacon and killed the crew? Sarge says whoever did this cannot get a hold of Martha, the device. He must be let out to find who is behind this sabotage. Request denied. Cassidy shows Sully the picture of her family. He always thought it was her children and husband. She points out that she is actually the child in the picture hiding her face. It was the only picture ever taken of her family. The following year, she was sent off to school and the enemy bombed her town, killing her whole family. Baines has been drinking heavily and neglecting his engineer duties. He approaches Cassidy in a drunken stupor but it is just a ploy to grab the two keys to arm Martha. Baines is spouting gibberish over the intercom, words and poems, and his philosophy. Sully and Cassidy run up to the control room to see that he is arming Martha. They are trying to talk him out of it, mentioning his wife back home. He stops before adding the last number. Sully is going to let Sarge out, but Baines informs him that he's gone having taken a leap out the window into the ocean. The storm is approaching two days early. Cassidy noticed a bunch of floatables to salvage a few miles away. Baines is in good spirits and has done a lot of fixing up. He wants to go to the salvage with Cassidy. There is a giant island of plastic out there. 
While they are salvaging, Sully tries to catch some fish. He pulls up the net and finds the body of Sarge with a bullet through his head. Either Baines or Cassidy is the culprit behind it all. The enemy. Sully now believes what Sarge said about there being someone from the other side on board. He notices the beacon can be moved. We flash back to three months ago and there is a hooded figure in a rowboat with the beacon moving toward the Aurora. The relief crew catches it with their spotlight. They are looking for the Sentinel but cannot find the beacon. The figure in the rowboat approaches the Aurora and we see the figure is Cassidy. She stands up and shoots all four crew members of the Aurora. Having got rid of the bodies, she allowed the ship to drift until it was spotted again months later. Sully returns alone from the trip claiming Baines jumped off the boat and wouldn't come back. Now he knows it's been her all along. She is the enemy from the other continent. The next morning, Cassidy awakens alone and Sully will not answer his radio. After a few minutes, he tells Cassidy that he knows she killed Sarge and the relief crew. Sully knows she's there to steal Martha for her people of her continent. He won't let her have it. Cassidy runs to the control room where she finds Sully has already armed the nuke. No one gets it now. She is still making excuses and telling him she doesn't understand why he's upset and what he's doing. He says... In your picture, it's raining. It doesn't rain on our continent. She admits to it and the nuclear bomb is almost at full charge. Sully says no one should have it, neither side. So it will detonate in a moment and that will be the end of life. But nothing happens. The bomb doesn't go off. The computer beeps and there's a message about all the horses, cats and swallows. What did they ever do to deserve this? That was what Scully had discussed with Baines when they were contemplating their existence. The last thing Baines did was make sure no one could ever detonate the nuclear device. Any enemy would have to be some serious engineer to get it to go off. So the two crew members, each from opposite sides of the war, stay there to defend it from whoever comes from whichever continent. They will make sure no one ever destroys the earth so the swallows and all life can have hope. What are your thoughts on this dark and depressing story? And who do you think the good guy was in all of this? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to be notified about when our next video is posted. As always, thanks for watching.